we are born, we are able to perceive reality very differently than we see it now. Reality is very complex, and what we perceive now are really social simplifications of how things really are. You can only capture the infinite dimensions of reality in your dreams, and then you can make progress. FUSE is a recently founded interfaith organization, and it's trying to address from an interfaith perspective the issue of sustainable development. I joined FUSE as an executive director to help them put together the issues of science and religion. And I want to talk in this series of videos about how science and religion together are needed to address the problem and to resolve the problem of global warming. We need to have a form of technology where countries have been made very little carbon. For the first time in human history, we are in a position to change the atmosphere of the planet, its bodies of water, and the complex web of species that makes life on Earth. This never happened before. This is all really about chemistry, biology, physics, and economics, mathematics, it's all about the sciences. Only the sciences can measure what's happening now. I have been working on this problem nearly 30 years, and the problem of global warming that is here today started really after World War II, when the Bretton Woods institutions were created, like the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the System for National Accounts, even the United Nations were created at that time. And economists such as John Maynard Keynes tried to develop a system of institutions that would help prevent other global wars by increasing trading and cooperation between nations. And they succeeded beyond anybody's expectations they increased international trade between nations four times more than the growth of the world economy since World War II. But the entire pattern of trade was based in an emphasis on exporting resources from developing nations, a continuation of the colonial period, but this time through markets, and fostered by the Bretton Woods institutions, the developing nations specialized and extracted and over-extracted natural resources, and the international trade in resources between rich and poor nations, due to the, the different characteristics of the two types of nations, led to over-extraction of resources, over-consumption of resources in the industrial nations, and what is now called the global tragedy of the commons. And through that is that we created the global environmental problems of today, the depletion of the ozone layer of the atmosphere, the biodiversity destruction, which is currently the sixth largest in the history of the planet, and the problem of global warming that FUSE is concentrating on. The United Nations Foundation has identified three issues for the next president to face in the United States on the first day in office. One is the Iraq war, another one is global poverty, and the third one is global warming. Do you see all three have to do with the global natural resources? The issue is not just important for the next U.S. president, 
when he or she takes office. It is being considered right now, very seriously, by the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate. Last year, I organized, with the leadership of Congressman Mike Honda, a briefing on energy and climate change with the support of seven members of U.S. Congress. The conference that we convened was called the Summit on Climate Change and, um, of, the, of the Americas. And um, we wanted to make sure that we uh, counted ourselves among uh, the other countries as part of that um, discussion. And, that, uh, and there was no assumption on our part that we had answers. It was seeking input and information from other countries that have been working on this for a while. It became very clear to me that as a country we needed to do something internally to align ourselves um, with the idea that as a nation we have to do something to address it and then as an entire nation, as a member of the global community, we have to do something with the other countries where we know that we are major uh, contributors of uh, carbon footprints, that we have a responsibility to share uh, our technologies with other countries. So there's answers to this global question from people from different parts of this world that we have to pay attention to and cannot discount. Uh, we have to set aside greed, uh, national pride, and put the survival of our, uh, of our globe uh, foremost in the name of our children. And it was very obvious to me listening to your presentation on climate change and the work that um, you have been involved in at the university, Columbia University, um, showed me that um, I needed to learn uh, more about uh, what other people understood so that I could be a better um, uh, policymaker and a better facil facilitator for uh, this kind of problem solving. knows that global warming originates from burning fossil fuels. Fossil fuels represent 89% of all the energy that we produce and use in the entire planet and is the source of economic development and progress. So every time we want to grow our economy, we want to produce more goods and services, we burn more fossil fuels, we emit more carbon. Carbon has a very unusual feature. Carbon dioxide distributes uniformly and stably over the entire atmosphere of the planet. And what this means is that if I measure the carbon concentration right here, it will be the same as it is in Madrid, Spain, right now, and in Beijing, China. It's very uniformly distributed over the entire planet. Whether we like it or not, the carbon concentration that we face in one nation is the same concentration that we face in all nations in the world. Therefore, this means that the concentration of carbon and the global warming problem are really one and the same for everybody in the planet. However, the developing nations who didn't originate this problem, because until now they contributed very little to the emissions of carbon, currently and historically, are the ones that will suffer the worst consequences, because they depend on agriculture and because poor people are more vulnerable to the elements and cannot protect themselves the way we can. Entire nations can disappear under the ocean. Bangladesh, hundreds of millions of people, and the Maldives islands can disappear. All the issues that we have discovered scientifically